If we want to deliver public services that are valued and meaningful to citizens, then we first need to make sure that we're delivering the right thing by understanding complexity and reducing uncertainty. For me, there felt like three discrete strands of research. The first one being the one I worked on, which was gathering the evidence from the existing evidence base, so looking at what already exists on this, not starting from scratch, um, but building on what went before and pulling out the key trends. This then went on to inform some user research interviews that were carried out with policymakers across, um, across government um, and asking them about their own experiences. There was another set of research that was all to do with workshops and, and it was done by our service designers. And they asked people to look at the policy making cycle as a journey or however they felt about it. What you have to remember about more formal reports and more formal research is that, that by the time it's published, actually it's, 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 it's evidence that's a bit older. So one of the great things about user research is, it, you know, it could be from three weeks ago. So it's a real snapshot of what's going on now. Um, and it speaks to people's experience as well. So it, it, it's, you could argue perhaps it's less objective, but when used in parallel with more objective evidence, it tells you about what people are, what, what's driving people's behavior, what, how people feel about the work they're trying to do. And if you're really in the business of changing the way people behave, I think it's valuable. You know, the stuff that's written down and, and, and um, codified already, but then there's a load of other stuff that's sort of just in people's minds. And how do you, how do you find out? How do you grapple with that? And so service design workshops are a really good way of uh, uh, talking to people, but recording that information, capturing it um, and, and turning that um, implicit in knowledge into explicit knowledge. We had more than a dozen journey maps and each one of those had you know, the, the, the thoughts and experiences and pain points and activities of another dozen policymakers each. So we had to create essentially our own taxonomy, our own language to talk about what we were seeing. And we had to then categorize all of the information across all of those, uh, across all of the stages, the common stages of policymaking. And then what we did is we essentially we kind of took what was a, a a sort of a qualitative methodology of you know talking to people and lis listening to them and, and and recording their experiences and we turned it into a, a quantitative one by uh, sort of essentially crunching the data and sort of taking it taking a much more mathematical approach to see where m most policymakers were indicating that this is where they spend their time. There was obviously quite a kind of spider's web of different articles and different different themes that kind of cross cutting. Um, but again, just just again, as, as, a, as a team, it was like, you know, we were we were constantly sort of adding and and I, I think it was pretty much like a sort of jigsaw puzzle. I think we sort of started off in one corner and, and eventually sort of filled out the picture and, and just added to it as we went along. Sometimes really clear links and and like a few conversations I had were, oh, that's really interesting that you found this. We found something really similar, even though this is from a report 10 years back. But what you found is from a, perhaps a, an interview with a policymaker you did last week. You know, these things are still true 10 years on, which I suppose is a good or a bad thing, depending on the way you look at it. But then there are other occasions, conversely, where um, something uh, perhaps um, a user researcher found from either an interview or a journey mapping workshop, um, we just didn't have the secondary evidence to back up or support and that was often where where that was the case where we would then have to sort of disregard a certain story because we didn't have enough evidence across the across the project across the piece so each team would come and put their theme down uh, or a specific answer to a particular discovery question and then we would rate our confidence essentially collectively as a team in terms of how much confidence we had in that particular theme to answer a particular question. Uh, so if we had low confidence, um, it suggested that either we needed to do more research, so we would then pull to, so a team would either come to me and said, could you try and uncover this in the in-depth interviews you're doing, or could we take it to the workshop? If we were high in confidence, it just meant 
um, that we were pretty sure about um, what was coming out for that particular discovery question. But you can come out of working on these problems feeling satisfied that you've actually um, you're delivering something that, that that is going to work more than say if you just kind of rush through a submission or rush through some advice based on quite a lot of assumptions. We're, we're producing ultimately too many services that don't quite meet the need or in some cases don't meet the need at all um, and that and that's causing you know wastage, wasting of, of public money or of resource um, and it's also leading to inequality. I think in this day and age that's that's something that we're all responsible for trying to combat um, and ultimately we should be producing policies that not only meet user needs but um, are inclusive um, and don't disadvantage particular groups of people.